Okay, guys. So we're only moments away from being finished with creating this notepad application. Might I mention using absolutely no code behind, which is really fun to do. Uh, you, you really feel accomplished when you do that. So uh, here, I don't know if it would be better. I'll just leave it down here at the bottom for now. But here's where we're going to start binding everything and having loads of fun. But we first need to create a namespace here. So we'll go to our window, we'll go to the namespace here, we'll do XMLNS, and we're going to call this view models because now we are going to be connecting to the CLR name space WPF notepad. Go down here in the IntelliSense and add in our view models directory. So now in our XAML, we can connect to our view models. Now, why are we doing this? Because uh, like I said, we want to do zero code behind. So normally we could go over here to the code behind of our main window and we could say, okay, hey, have data context equal um, new main. We would do, if we added the namespace, we would do new main view model and everything would be hunky dory. But what did we say our goal was? Our goal was absolutely zero code behind. So we are not going to take that route. We want this to be a virgin. So we're going to hop back over to our main window and we can actually, it's very easy, set the data context in our XAML. So we'll go to our window dot data context. I like to do it in a separate tag. You could do it as a property if you wished. Um, we're going to do our window data context and we're going to access our view models namespace we created. And notice we, this is another cool thing too about doing it here. Uh, IntelliSense will actually tell us what's connected now. So here we have our main view model and our help view model in our view models folder. So we can actually just say, hey, connect to the main view model. And it lets us know what we have access to. Now here's our problem is we're getting an error. So let's hover over here and we'll say main view model does not exist in the namespace view models. So sometimes if that happens, I always like to try to rebuild our solution here rebuild it, we'll go back to our solution, save all, and we'll try closing it and reopening it. Visual Studio is very buggy. Okay guys, so I figured out my problem there. And sometimes you will actually get that uh, if you just need to build or rebuild or clean solution. Uh, sometimes I don't even know what the hell I'm doing. I just start doing stuff with the project. But here was the problem I was having and most likely you were having if you, uh, if I misguided you. <laughs> if we go to our solution here, if you remember, in our help view model, I already commented it out. But notice uh, I, I set the relay command to null. Now since we are binding directly into our XAML, that means it's going to be picky about what we actually do. I don't know why I didn't comment on that. So here we can't have it as null. We're going to get an error. So this is where we have to set the display about. So now if we go to our main view model, everything is okay because when we bind it directly to this way, like I said, um, if we go back here, we can actually see the things we can access. And since our main view model has a help view model, we got an error because it was picking up a null reference exception. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. And it actually helped me debug it by doing our data context in our XAML, which is really interesting. But moving on, we're going to actually start uh, creating the aesthetics of our application. We're going to start off with getting rid of this grid and we're doing a dock panel. So now that we have our dock panel, uh, I always don't like things being directly uh, touching the edge of the window. So I'll just do a little margin of one here. And now since we're using a dock panel, we're going to simply dock a menu at the top. And of course the rest is going to be a uh, the text box. So I'm going to try and move through this really fast. So we're going to do a menu and doc panel dot doc. We want the menu to be at the top here. And inside we're going to do menu items or no menu dot items. 
Okay, so here we're going to set the items of the menu and we're going to do a menu item and we'll call, uh, eh, change my mind. We're going to do a header here. The header is going to hold the text and we're going to have a new open save save as. So new open save save as, we'll copy paste and we'll simply change the header save save as and then we're going to move on and we're going to have another menu item so now just keep in mind um, these uh, here's the menu items and now we have a menu item here but actually this is wrong because if you look up top we don't want that we want a drop down menu and that's because I forgot to do a menu item okay and inside of that menu item we will then have these menu items uh, let me try and save here I'm gonna get an error because of this okay and we'll save so now we have this and of course we want the header of this to be file so now we have that so when we click file we'll get these menu items as a drop down Next, we want another menu item. So we'll have another menu item. And we'll give this a header of, uh, let's see what, format would be appropriate. We'll say format without the E, if I can spell. Uh, we'll have format here. And inside, we're going to have two menu items that we will actually, I'll just copy paste here. Going to have two menu items. One is going to be, uh, we'll say format, we'll just call it another format, and we'll say word wrap. So these will be the options for formatting our text and for using the word wrap. Moving on, we're also going to lastly have another menu item that is going to hold our help. So, we're going to do a header and we'll call this help. And we're only going to have one menu item here with the header of about. You can add whatever else you'd like if you are interested, but for now we're only going to open up an about window. Moving on, let me make this a little bigger. Moving on, we're also now going to, remember we're in a doc panel here. So we're going to create a doc panel within a doc panel because we're going to be doing one extra interesting thing here. So we're going to create a doc panel within our doc panel, not our menu, which I just did there. And inside this new doc panel here, we're going to have two text blocks two text blocks and in our first one we are going to dock this to the bottom of our second dock panel and in the next we are going to do a dock to the top now why do we have two text blocks well one is going to display the name of the currently open file so we are aware if we are currently working with an existing file or if we're working under a new one so we're going to have our first one docked to the bottom and we're going to now, I guess we could start doing the binding. So now we're going to set the data context binding to file document. Now we're binding the data context because we are binding the text to the file path property. So we can see what file from where we are currently working with. Conversely, well, not really conversely, um, we could do file dot file path instead of setting the data context. But now remember, if we go back to our main view model, uh, notice we don't have observable object here. Uh, we don't have them in our view models. So because of that, we really want to bind the data context to the document that actually is then 
going to bind to the file path. Otherwise, uh, depending on the hierarchy we have, it's not going to update unless file was notified of a change, which that is not going to be important to us. So getting that out of the way here, this text block uh, is going to be our actual notepad, which is going to hold a lot of bindings. So now that we docked it to the top, we also want a vertical scroll bar, if I can, right? Yeah, vertical scroll. Aha, what am I doing wrong? Text block, silly me. We want a text box, jeez Louise. Okay, no big deal. Now we got our vertical scroll bar visibility, which is what I wanted. And we want this to always be visible. And I gotta add a little slash there. So we want our scroll bar to always be visible. We then want to set the data context binding. This is where we're going to bind it to, of course, the editor. The editor is going to be the view model for our text box. So we want to bind it to our editor because that's holding all of our formatting and our document with our text. We then want to go to the font family, okay? And we're going to bind it to format.family. Now, notice here, we are doing format.family because we go to our editor and don't worry, I'm not gonna be taking breaks every second here. I just wanna get some of the basics out of the way. Um, so notice here, we're binding to our editor and then we're saying format. So we're getting to the format if we go to our format, this is where we're then going to see our family. So that is what we are binding to. If we go back to our window, we're binding to the editor, and then in, and then since we changed the data context, we now change the hierarchy of where we are binding to, which means now instead of saying editor, I can simply say format. If I didn't use the data context, I would have to do editor.format.family. So that's the fun part of setting the data context for each control. So now we get to move on without my interruption. So we got font size next. Font size is going to obviously be binding format.size. Notice now we also have IntelliSense, which is really fun. So we can see what our uh, XAML is able to view because we bound it from our XAML and not our code behind. So now we're going to do font uh, style and we're going to bind this to format dot style and we're going to do our font weight and this is going to be bounded to the format dot uh, whoops format dot weight and then our text wrapping of our text block or text box is going to be bound to our format dot wrap and that's it really for binding for just a second because now we're going to do accepts return true. So accepts return true means if we hit enter, it's going to break to a new line. And since it's a text document, uh, we also wanna accept the tab. If people feel like they wanna format into paragraphs in their, uh, their notepad or not. And then of course, the most important part is our text. And that's where we're going to do our document. Excuse me, that was a coffee hiccup slash burp. Uh, our document text, we're going to bind to that. Now, here's the thing, we're going to be loading and saving. So, we wanna clarify the mode of this binding is going to be two ways. So whatever we input in our text box is going to uh, set the value of the text document text property and whenever we change the document text property it is going to change the value of our text box we want to make sure we have that two ways now here's the thing is we also need to know that sometimes things are going to change and we want to make sure everything's up to date on the new values so this is where we're also going to access the update source trigger and this is going to be property change. We set that to property change. So if we open up an existing file and then make changes to it, it is now going to update the text property in our document every time uh, a value changes. So that way when we save it, it's saving everything that is current. So 
we have all this now. So if we ran our application real quick, we have all this fun stuff. We can hit enter, go to new lines, one, two, three. We can tab, tab. So we can do some fun things. We have our file open, our new open, save, save as. So let's do some testing here. If I wanted to save this document, I could click save as and nothing's happening because we haven't bound our commands yet. And also we haven't even set up our formatting windows or uh, really any of that. So we're going to close our application and now we're going to bind our actual menu items to commands. So uh, we're going to do that in the next video. Like I said, XAML is kind of a lot to do, so I'm going to really break these up, but we're, we're really almost done here. So I'll see you guys at the next video where we will then bind commands so we can actually do things when we click.